What's up, guys? It's episode 352. Welcome back to the show. I don't take. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. Hey, what's up? It's Jacqueline. Welcome back to the show and welcome to my kitchen. We're back here today for the third time to make beef stew, okay? I'm going to be doing a lot of freestyling here. Um, this is not necessarily a podcast-friendly uh, recipe, <laughs> especially with my setup. So it's going to be a little wild. Like I said last time, it might be a little chaotic, but tune in to watch on YouTube or Spotify if you want to follow along the recipe on video. Uh, hi, if you're on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also if you're new here, subscribe to the podcast, wherever you're listening right now, I'm on Apple, Spotify, Google podcast, Stitcher, Breaker, wherever you listen to podcasts, Overcast, I forgot that one. Subscribe to the podcast and leave me a review while you're there. Uh, Let's get into it. Uh, We're gonna start off, honestly. Okay, let's just get this out of the way. So beef stew, this is a very simple recipe. It might seem confusing when I show you everything you need but it's actually a very simple recipe it doesn't have a lot of ingredients but there's a lot of processes to it so we're going to be uh browning meat we're going to be braising the meat we're going to be putting this in the oven for a couple hours so i'm actually gonna have to come back at a later date actually today just in a couple hours to do the official taste test and tell you how it turned out because i'm not going to leave you hanging this is the best beef stew first of all like We've come a long way. There, so once upon a time, I was a hater on soups, okay? I was, actually, I take that back. I don't like thin bisques. I don't like, you know, like a tomato basil. I don't like a butternut squash soup. I don't like a lemongrass soup. You know, that kind of, I like a hearty chili and a beef stew. So I did say that. So now we're coming full circle. Here I am, episode 352. I, I said that like two years ago. We're now cooking live on the podcast. I am now a cooking show podcast. Um, I'm going to be honest. I don't know if this is me officially niching down. I don't want to say anything too soon. This is now the third cooking podcast, but um, it feels right. This is combining the two things I love, cooking and podcasting. So yay, we're here. We're doing it. Um, I just need to like get this going because it's literally like there's a lot to unpack here and tell you about beef stew. Um, I'm actually making, I'm making like a triple batch. (laughs) This might not be the most pod friendly. Did I say this earlier? The most podcast friendly recipe to do here. I'm literally standing next to four pounds of beef chuck um and like six pounds of potatoes uh this is going to be a huge batch today so bear with me um where i'm going to be doing my regular podcast content life update life updates current events etc while i cook so i'm going to be teaching you the recipe and talking about my life and all the things at the same time um what i'm getting to is a couple weeks ago i made this for i'm going to start unpacking the meat while i say talk actually multitask here um, I'm a woman, I can multitask. This is like, oh my God, this is the epitome of a woman or like being a woman. This multitasking I'm doing right now. I'm focusing on making sure my podcast is like recording and everything's good with the audio. I'm also like keeping my m- mouth next to the microphone the whole time because I don't have a lavalier and I can't do this like without being attached to the mic the whole time. Um, <laughs> new new podcast mic setup coming soon um and then I'm also like literally cooking beef stew um on camera um like it's a lot so I'm starting off by the way with uh lean chuck stew meat um okay you know what wait here's what you're you're supposed to get a chuck roast a nice fancy chuck roast and you're supposed to cut it up and and cube it yourself but here's what I'm gonna say I just buy the the stew meat at the grocery store most recipes would recommend if you're on like new york new york times cooking or like bon appetit or any of these like fancy bougie gourmet websites they're all going to say like buy the chuck roast you know cut off the extra fat blah blah i just buy the stew meat okay i've got four pounds here and what i'm getting to oh my gosh what i am getting to is i made this a couple weeks ago and 
for Corey and I, because he he's like, I want beef stew, so I made him beef stew. I even I think I posted that on Instagram. Yeah, it's been like two or th- three weeks now, and he literally went to work that day told like seven people told his parents his mom was like calling me like I need this beef stew he's like this is the best thing I've ever put in my mouth so now this weekend the reason I'm making so much is because I'm making it for his parents and we're gonna have this over at their house so what you're seeing me cook here will be in his parents mouth in the next couple days why did that sound so wrong okay step one you're gonna okay first of all don't wash your meat that's probably unsanitary what I just did there um yeah I don't know I, I um yeah one of my old roommates uh, cooked a lot of fried chicken and, and he always told me like yeah you don't like only white people wash their meat so if I don't identify as a white person no, what am I saying oh my god this is not the, the route this pot this needs to not go that route right now um I just do what he I I stay doing what he said because he cooked some goddamn good fried chicken uh so yeah uh what am I saying don't wash your meat I literally just get the f- packs to the grocery store I'm, i have a giant bowl here go to youtube or spotify to watch i'm probably going to say that 20 times in this episode um that's like so unsanitary this is like not okay if you if, if you watch okay here comes the um un, undiagnosed adhd or whatever you call it um it's really coming out right now okay you need a big bowl you need like honestly most recipes call for like two pounds of meat I always go more meat okay the ratio of my beef stew is more meat less potatoes good amount of carrots I like a lot of meat in my beef stew that's what Corey requested and so I'm doing four pounds here what am I saying number one don't wash your meat it doesn't it's I think what he told me my roommate is like you have a higher chance of contaminating it when you're washing it and stuff just like don't it's already been packaged and prepared and washed so you don't need to do that and then yeah so buy the lean beef stew meat even though the recipe probably says it's by the chuck roast don't wash your meat uh throw it in a giant bowl and you're gonna salt and pepper it okay and then we're gonna brown it so while I'm talking about my life updates we're gonna brown the meat and we're actually gonna do this in batches because you don't want to overcrowd the um the pan I have a big dutch oven here get yourself a Dutch oven, Dutch oven. if you don't have one, they're like 70 bucks at TJ Maxx. <laughs> Actually, I'm pretty sure was it $70. I was like, well, that's a lot for TJ Maxx for like a big pot. Um, yeah, get a Dutch oven. That's your assignment. If you don't have a Dutch oven already. Um, I think it's actually cast iron made of cast iron, but it's like not a cast iron pan, if that makes sense. Sorry, back to the whole, like me being ADD and getting crazy. Like I literally threw, okay. A couple things. Let me slow it down. (laughs) Okay. I was saying I'm going to refer to YouTube and Spotify this whole time because I'm on camera cooking and I want to invite you into my kitchen and and like have you watch me do this so you can understand the recipe better and like follow. So I was saying that and also I was chucking the chuck roast. What I, I was chucking those containers that I emptied out and this bowl here into my sink and they were just like the juices are just like flying over there um I do have Lysol spray on hand it's like ready to go so I'll just spray that down after this podcast um but yeah I didn't do some I already messed this recipe up uh so I just noticed I did not pat my meat dry so ideally you would pat your cubes of chuck roast dry then you would salt and pepper them okay now what we're gonna do here I've got my oven on 325 okay oven on 325 I'm gonna have to Oh God, I didn't think this through. We're gonna have to take the microphone on a field trip over here. Wait till I cut these onions. It's gonna be insane. Um, Okay, so you're gonna take a couple tablespoons of olive oil um, and put your Dutch oven on medium heat, medium high. God, I'm gonna freestyle this entire recipe, honestly. Like I already know it. I'm gonna, or should I list out everything you need? right now like that official recipe just put a bunch of olive oil and not a bunch like like three or three tablespoons ish on medium high and then you're gonna brown the meat so um I have a big wooden spoon gonna let that get hot okay um life updates I got the flu let's just get into the stories so I can keep you entertained while this is heating up um 
Life updates. I got the flu. Okay. So Corey got me sick. Okay. So this is heating up. I'm trying to keep track. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How am I doing so far? Oh my God. This is, this is a lot. I, I probably should wear my old popster mic instead, even though the audio's like 10 times worse because then I could like walk around. Now I have to literally move this. It's 2023, 20, Jacqueline. This is your third. You're going into your fourth year of podcasting and it's still this makeshift and you're still using literally GarageBand and iMovie to record and edit your pod like it's you know what I mean like but that's what I that's the, that is the message of the the day as a content creator um who's literally doing this on the fly just doing it doing a food show food podcast uh just out of the blue this is so the message of the day is just don't overthink it. If you're looking to start or thinking about starting a podcast, if you're thinking about doing content creation, just do, don't overthink it. Nobody really cares at the end of the day. It's about me entertaining you and having a good time and being your friend on the internet and like teaching you about cooking and it, the little things don't matter like that. So here we are, we're going to walk around with my big SM7B. Uh, it's at, it's like, it's a it's like I'm on crutches. Okay. This is just going to be with me the whole time. Um, cool. I got the flu. Corey got me sick. This is heating up. Um, just a sec. Oh, fuck. I didn't, I didn't stir up the, the chuck roast pieces. Fuck. Okay. This is, this is going to be kind of hard. Turn this down to medium. Oven's on 325. Watch me burn the house down like literally five minutes into this episode. <laughs> um, fuck. okay. I just put the first round of meat pieces in the dutch oven here with olive oil to brown it i'm gonna let this go i'm gonna do this in batches of thirds so about about a pound and a half in each uh bat in each round of browning okay this is gonna be a crazy this is like okay this is a literal brain challenge or whatever you want to call it like this is um this is gonna take a lot of of concentration to be honest but I want to stay on on the story about me getting the flu. So Corey, so what, what's this month? It's October. Happy October. Happy spooky season. We're making comfort food. I, you know, it's football season. We're, eat, we're eating chili. We're, you know, watching our favorite teams, you know, play games. It's a good time. This is my favorite time of year. It's a little crisper here in the mornings here in San Diego. Um, I love it. I love fall. I love cooking in the fall. It makes me, I, fall just makes me want to cook. Like just the whole vibe. Like, yeah, you guys should see my iPhone background. Um, well, I'm not focused right now. I'm really not focused. Um, <laughs> it's basically a bunch of pumpkins and shit. Okay, cool. So September, Corey had a lot of travel in September. He went to, what is it? Wisconsin. He like gall, he, he had a real estate trip and then he had a golf trip a couple weeks after he went on the golf trip and had a cold anyways he got the flu so bad we were in the hospital <laughs> he had to get on like liquids um and then I got sick okay so that was my life update yeah I got the flu I have not is this even browning okay let me just tell you what happened so I went to bed this is gonna be graphic I don't think I should do this right now Basically, I haven't puked my brains out like that since I was a little, a little kid getting the flu. Um, it was like the full on stomach flu. And I think it's called like norovirus. I don't know if you've heard about it, but it's, I think it's like going around right now. And I'm always saying like, I never get sick. I never get the flu. Um, and here we are. Uh, last week, I was just I was down and out. Um, I don't even it's a it's a blur. I think I was in bed for like two days straight. I think I just like. Corey got me he like bought me some popsicles and what did I eat I like couldn't eat it was bad um see I got the flu and the other life update oh my gosh I saw Bert on Sunday so Bert Kreischer uh comedian Bert Kreischer if you're not familiar is just one of my favorites of all time I just love listening to his podcast him and Tom and his Burt cast and it was my first time seeing him live and it was the first time seeing a comedian do a show at an arena instead of a club it was at the Pachanga here and it was such a good time like it's everything I thought and more like he's just so great and if you I don't know if you saw the 
um, the machine movie. Like he told the machine story and it was like this big moment in the show and to like wrap up the show. I don't know. He's just, I'm sure if you're listening to this podcast, um, I'm just assuming that you also like Burt Kreischer. If you like me, you probably, I mean, if you <laughs> just, you know, um, one in the same and, and like, a, I feel, I don't know if you feel this about Burt, feel this way about Burt, but like maybe everyone feels this way. There's like this, I don't know. I just have this like thing for him. Not like that. Like he's just so pure <laughs> as a person and just so his energy is so infectious or whatever like in a good way like he it just makes me happy and I was I was telling um Corey this when we, when we got to the show I'm like how great would it be because I always think about um you know like you got one life you got one shot like it's all about like leaving a legacy leaving your mark on the world and I was thinking I was like how cool would it be to sell out arenas like this to tour the world and make people feel good as your legacy like your his whole thing is like he makes people laugh he makes people feel good it's just it's like so cool and I, I don't know I just love comedy I love Bert um it was such a good time I think oh yeah what did we do we went to like we got there super early we tried going to Chili's to get a drink before we were next to the arena and then it was like packed so then we went to um I'm browning the second batch of meat by the way and I pulled out the uh, first uh round of browned meat so this is step one we got to cut up, cut the onions next and saute them and add the tomato paste and some spices and balsamic vinegar and wine and all the things so we'll get into that in a sec um anyways we like went to this what was it called like it was like a little pizza place and they had beer there so we got a beer at the pizza place before the show and then we went into the show and like I just got this rush of excitement as soon as I walked in I don't know I love live entertainment it doesn't matter if it's a com comedian or if it's like sports or a concert or a festival like anything live entertainment I get so hyped up like as soon as I walked in the doors saw these people walking around and he definitely draws a certain um crowd I don't know if it's like all comedians or just him but like it the, he's got a type of uh fan and it was really funny to see because I was just like yeah these are Bert's people these are 100 percent here for Bert um if you know what I'm saying it was just like okay uh I dress way too cute or something like I just was over I should have worn like a big hoodie and like converse and I, I don't know I just tried tried too hard I think with my outfit um I actually wore all white <laughs> anyways so I got so excited as soon as we walked in I was like okay I need I need a beer another beer um I'm here to see Bert it's time to drink like and then I got a corn dog and then I got Corey a corn dog and then I got us um mini donuts and I don't know why but like when I drink IPAs now it's like a fine wine like I don't really drink IPAs anymore um I usually just drink like light beers like my thing is <laughs> ever since I went to Montana with Corey last year like I literally will just go to a bar and order Coors Lights bottles of Coors Light and like that's my beer of choice um it's just it doesn't make me hungover and it's refreshing and it's whatever. But now when I drink an IPA, yeah, back to what I'm saying, it's like a fine wine. Like it's so like that. I used to love that hoppy like flavor IPAs have. And now I'm like, Ooh, I got to sip this slow and like really savor. It just it doesn't hit the same. But anyways, I sit down with the corn dogs and the beer and the, and the donuts and, um, we're watching the, the, the openers and they were great. And then, um, I started eating my corn dog and I hadn't eaten like all day and Corey took like one bite of his corn dog and he, he wasn't feeling that great from being sick still like he was still like didn't really have an appetite so I downed both corn dogs and like 15 mini donuts and I think I had two beers <laughs> it was a lot it was so fucking fun um we sang the national anthem at the end um yeah like I just <clears throat> it was like the best day ever and like I remember Am I cooking right now? Holy shit. Okay, I'm going to stir and talk. Um, browning the meat. And the reason why we're doing this in batches, just, just to remind you, is because we don't want to overcrowd the pan because that will, like, steam the meat out too much or something. I don't know. It, like, fucks up the browning. You want the browning to brown the meat. Or you want the pan to be hot and brown the meat. You don't want it to get, like, soggy. So, so make sure he's high enough, like, medium high, and just really, like, let it crisp. Um and that's why I I love a Dutch oven because it's like the best for doing that. Um, whenever you're cooking like a stew or braising meats, like a Dutch oven's like 
the way to go. Um, so yeah, I got the flu. I went to the Burt show. What else is going on? We picked out a new wedding venue. Like we just switched it up. Um, and our dates the same eight twenty four twenty four, but um, the venue is now different. But, like we're exploring this new venue. I think we're gonna go with it. Um, and it's very us. So I'm happy. Like it. I'm. I'm glad it it moved in this direction because um, I feel like it's very us. It's gonna be super nice and um, yeah. I need to like cut these onions and show you how to cut an onion without crying. So let's like do this. Also, fun, I have a couple fun things to share. So my mom has a garden back in Washington, and she the other day. So she's been watching my cooking podcast. She's like all about it. Loves that I'm doing this now. Um, and she has a garden back in Washington and she's like, Hey, can I ship you potatoes? And she did this last year. So today I'm going to add, I don't want to use all of them because I want to cook them with our steaks. Um, like if we cook steaks this weekend, so I'm going to save a few of them, but, um, yeah, she sent me her little potatoes from her garden. And then I got this super special gift with the potatoes. It's a recipe box my great grandma's recipe box and I was FaceTime FaceTiming my sister when I opened this and I thought it was my mom's at first and then I noticed the handwriting on the recipes and I started crying because I realized it's my great grandma's handwriting and it's literally like like oatmeal cookies in her blue pen um yeah it's her little recipe box so I think maybe later I'll like if I can find oh my gosh what if I found beef stew pies and pastries sandwiches and snacks miscellaneous breads biscuits muffins cakes cookies there's a ton of cookie recipes um oh my gosh I should try to find beef stew maybe while this is braising the oven um I'll look for it oh my gosh that's so special Ooh, mustard sauce what's that broccoli casserole it's just like it literally because my grandma she's passed away now um it's been like a couple years and it's just crazy to see her hand there's something about handwriting from people that have passed it's just like yeah what's this dot cookies golden grand bars chewy date drops I'm excited so I'm gonna look for beef stew but yeah let's get into um I love when my mom sends it's always like okay and she also sent me I don't know if you can see it behind me there's like this little, there's like this little, uh, angel doll thing. Um, I don't know if that's a chew toy for the dogs or if it's for me, it's like literally a doll, but it's like a stuffed animal thing. And, um, anyways, I just thought it always like, it still feels like getting a care package when you're like, I remember when we went to camp as kids, we went to summer camp, like one time it was called CYO camp. It was like a Catholic it was like Catholic youth organization camp. And I'm pretty sure like halfway through the week, we got care packages from our parents. Like that was one of the things that the parents did. And it was like such a, like getting a package with like snacks and little things for camp. I don't know. Just like that feeling of getting a care package from your parents or like, your, I don't know, like your grandma or, um, I don't know. It's just like the best feeling. It just gets me all like in my feels okay this last batch of meat's about done we're gonna cut these onions and the nice thing about cutting these onions is we're not gonna dice them we're not gonna chop them really small we're gonna um make like chunky pieces um you'll see so and then we have to smash a bunch of garlic cloves and i haven't unpeeled any of these yet so Okay, uh, just a sec. Let me finish taking this meat out and then I'll be right back. Okay, I just pulled out all of the meat, all of the brown meat from the big Dutch oven into this. You could just use like a bowl or an extra pan. This is an R place pan. These are the best for like everyday cooking. They're like the perfect depth. Um, I love them so much. Like we have we have two of them now, but um, and I like how this little spatula it comes with, this wooden spatula just like hooks on right here um, when you cook. So set aside your meat and now we're going to chop up the onions and the garlic we're going to add onions garlic balsamic vinegar and then tomato paste to the little brown juicy stuff that the meat left in the pan all right let's get into the tip about onions okay okay i'm going to move this so you can see what i'm doing all right 
if you don't want to cry when you're chopping an onion, like there's no reason to be an emotional wreck around an onion. It's 2023. Like it's time to learn how to do this properly. So you're not in pain. Just don't cut the root. That's all you got to know. Just don't cut that little root. The second you chop that off, it's going to start to bleed. And that's why you cry. Okay. Um, don't cut the, just don't cut the root. <laughs> I feel like an influence, like a beauty guru. See that? Don't cut the root. So what, what does that look like? Set your onion down, root side up, cut the root, not off, but in half. So you're going to chop it straight down the middle. Now I leave, I leave all the wrappings on and shit. I don't really peel that off first. You're going to take off a couple layers or a layer. I usually do like the first layer. And for this, for the beef stew, we're going to, um, we're going to make chunks. We're not going to, uh, what, what, what am I saying? We're not going to, um, dice it. So I do have a garbage next to me. Let's utilize our garbage. Okay. So by not cutting the root, it's not going to bleed and you're not going to cry. That's all you need to know. It's that simple. Um, I've heard put a piece of bread in your mouth, like chew the bread while you're cutting the onion. I've heard don't cut the root, but then like wash it. I think that's an extra step. Like you don't need to do. Um, I'm currently not crying, so it's working. Um, this is proof. Go to YouTube or Spotify to watch me not cry. Um, this is proof that it works. Um, I believe Gordon Ramsay taught me this. Like, I don't know, like 10 years ago. I don't, re I don't remember where I saw this, but um, yeah, just don't cut the root. It's that simple. Um, isn't it funny how like we go our whole lives literally like crying in pain from chopping onions when it's literally so unnecessary like it's like okay I think the last time I made this beef stew it's been a couple weeks now I didn't I cut the root and for some reason I, for some reason I wasn't crying I don't know if it's because of my like my body is just like adjusted to something something in the onion I don't know Corey was crying like six feet away on the couch I'm like how is that even possible like it must get in the air but um or he, yeah he was like watching football he was chopping onions I cut the root off on accident and he was like did you cut onions and it, oh you know it was crazy I cut the onion and it was a delay like it took him like 15 minutes while the onions were in the pot which, which I'm gonna do that in a second here um, we're just me measuring with our heart today, by the way. I don't even know how many onions, um, this is actually, requ uh, calls for. I just know that measure with your heart, add the flavor. Um, we're doing that with the garlic and the onions today. I'm just a big believer in that. Like more is more. Don't skimp out on the, uh, aromatics. I don't even know what these things are called. Um, Claire Saffitz actually did like an entire, I love her cooking YouTube show. I used to watch that during like the pandemic. Um, there's a name for these like root, are these root? That's, I don't know, onions and garlic and shallots and, um, ooh, ooh, did I cut the root? <sighs> I cut it in half. This one's a little, it's a little steamier. Not a lot though. It's subtle. It's not like where you're crying, crying. Um, I'm not going to be fake. Like I'm going to be honest. Like, uh, I feel, I feel something in my left eye, but it's not, it's not like a full on cry fest, you know, like usually when you cut an onion, how that feels, it's not even close to that. So don't cut the root. Um, what was I saying? So by the way, onion tip, when a recipe calls for one large onion, what is one large onion? One large onion in a recipe is two cups of onions. One, so I'm gonna go biggest to smallest. One medium onion, if a recipe asks for a medium onion, it's one cup of onions. And then one small onion is a half a cup of onions. But that's like very conservative in my opinion when you're cooking, like just add a little more. So like if it's, oh, you need two large onions, Wait, what does this recipe even have? Um, I think this recipe that I'm using has 
two medium yellow onions. Okay, so one cup is a so two cups. Okay, and I'm also I should add more onions. <laughs> Wait, I should have added more. Um, these are pretty large though, these onions. But see, it doesn't matter how big they are. It's about the cupage, the size of the however many cups. Oh my god, Jacqueline, chop these onions. Um, but yeah, just measure with your heart at the end so forget what i just said about one medium equaling a cup or one large equaling equaling two cups just measure with your heart um i have a lot of meat uh in this beef stew because i'm like tripling it so i'm just gonna add a lot of onions i'm just gonna chop we're just making little cubes here rough chop nothing fancy um <laughs> okay wait you you are gonna want to cut the root off when you do this though because otherwise you're gonna be eating that so make sure you remove that um and watch me start crying because i just said don't remove the root if you don't want to cry and now i remove the root i think at first it's it's just like the less you touch the onions and you just chop them fast and get them in the pan and um get them cooking so just yeah and then we're gonna do like Honestly, like 15 cloves of garlic <laughs> smashed garlic you're not going to dice it up again it's like rough chopping um i don't know i'm a home cook like i'm a i'm a just a i'm a feel it out kind of chef <laughs> i just feel it out and go i just i just freestyle you know what i mean it just feels right so i do it um this amount of onions feels right my pot is gonna be so full like wait till you see how full this is gonna be because it's there's just a lot going in here um okay so chunks of onions not dices chunks and then we're gonna add this to let me crank the heat up to medium we're gonna add this to the brown juices that are at the bottom of the pan right now i don't know what to call it the pot or the pan um <laughs> This is, a, like I said earlier, like the amount of focus it's taking right now for me to do this podcast is insane. I'm really proud of, my, like this is a really good brain um, mental exercise or whatever. The brown juices that are at the bottom of the pot, the Dutch oven, the pan, whatever, um, are gonna be swimming around the onions and the garlic and then the tomato paste. So I do have a little can of tomato paste here I also add more than it asked for this. I think the, the recipe is two, how much of, one and a half tablespoons of tomato paste. That's just, two, okay. First of all, one and a half tablespoons of tomato paste and beef stew. It's like, just add two tablespoons, just two dollops. Take, two, take a spoon, literally just take a spoon or just like shake it in. Add like a good amount. Like it's not gonna F up the flavor. It's just gonna make it taste better. That's why, that's what I believe is <laughs> the reason why, um, all my food just tastes over the top good it's because i i like add a little more than again flavor it's all about flavor like i add a little more than what um is being asked okay i just added the onions and now we're gonna smash and peel peel and smash like what did i say 15 cloves of garlic like this is gonna be <laughs> a lot but um like of work i mean so i should story time story tell while i do this um i have a thought about girls getting engaged in 2023 on the internet and publicly sharing their engagement um <laughs> experience so i obviously i'm engaged right now i'm planning a wedding i got engaged back in may um so yay um i don't know wait by the way i need to add this balsamic while i talk because this needs to go in there it's my left hand is like i feel like an octopus right now uh, my mouth's working my arms working so i don't actually have balsamic vinegar i just ran out but i have this balsamic vinegar glaze and like i said last week like use what you got this isn't going to ruin the recipe because it's a glaze and not balsamic vinegar you just need a vinegar what this is going to do is add flavor and break up the, the vinegar is going to break up the um what's it called you know i do have red wine vinegar I'm gonna add a little red wine vinegar too um it's just gonna break up the the chunky brown bits on the bottom so you need two like two tablespoons i'm not even gonna measure i'm just gonna go whoop. um it's probably too much if you're like an actual chef out there like who wants to like literally punch me in the face right now <laughs> uh or is this like commendable it's like just 
do just feel it out measure with your heart um okay these are sauteing they're just these onions by the way i cut them in about one inch chunks if you're looking for like a size to cut them they're about one inch um always <laughs> okay so yeah back to what i'm saying about engagement in 2023 i mentioned last week how like 15 people i follow are like either having a baby getting engaged just had a wedding planning a wedding like everyone i follow all of a sudden all these girls i've been following for years are like going through those chapters and it's exciting because like so am i and it's fun to watch so but there is this trend i do not understand and i'm only gonna okay i'm gonna speak from my experience because my engagement story i do have a podcast about it i think it's called like my engagement story i'm so dry mouth right now i need water <laughs> um yeah i my entire engagement the trip what happened was flawless like perfect right out of a movie like like my my fiance he Corey, he pulled it off like it's it's like so I, every time I think about it, I get so happy. Like it was perfect. And the reason for that, and this is what I'm going to get to, is because I was totally surprised. I didn't plan or I didn't go to the ring store. I didn't go to the jewelry store and pick out my ring. I didn't tell, show him rings I liked. I didn't like, oh, and here's the whole reason I'm saying this is because I keep seeing these get ready with me's to get engaged. Like girls are fully getting going into the, they'll be like you know on a trip with their boyfriend and they suspect that they're they're gonna get proposed to so they're making they like go into their bathroom in the hotel like before they're gonna go go somewhere like whatever and they're like assuming it's gonna be the day they get engaged and so they're doing a full-on tiktok get ready with me to get engaged and i'm like i'm me i know it's like different strokes for different folks right i am just the whole point to me it's like so for, in my opinion in my experience it was so special that he like picked out the ring 100 percent. i wasn't involved at all it this is all him he killed it by the way <laughs> like so happy with what he picked out like he just knows he just gets it like he just knows what what to get um anyways i like every single engagement ring i see now i'm just like i it's not for me not for me I just I don't know why maybe it's just it's also the new engagement ring like trend or style is very like everyone's doing the same thing it's like the gold band the thin gold band with the big rock that's like either an emerald cut or like a, an oval that's like the it's like so trendy that's like the um it, what is it reminding me of it's kind of like not to shit on okay I'm just <laughs> It's like congratulations you're engaged that's amazing like or, you know it's a, happy, it's a happy time in your life like i shouldn't be talking shit about other rings and, and praising my i mean i just um i just think mine looks better than <laughs> it's like it, it just looks trendy now it's like everyone's getting the same ring i don't want the same goddamn ring everyone else has um if that makes sense but yeah they get ready with me i'm like oh fuck like maybe some people are more about they want to they don't want to be surprised they want to be ready they want to have their nails done like i i talked about hold on let me stir these onions i talked about in my engagement story episode how literally 10 minutes before we did our little like engagement photo like we literally had this photographer on catalina island follow us around and take couples photos and i was completely oblivious like i suspected it i asked him the day before if if he's proposing to me like as a joke and he just shut it down i was like oh okay like this is just for our anniversary like couple photos like we need nice pictures together and blah blah, blah. but like literally 10 minutes before <laughs> the photographer was gonna meet us my nails were just bare and chipped and shitty and i brought i happened to bring red nail polish and so literally at the last second i'm like Corey, should i paint my nails and he's like yeah it would match your toes because my toes are red and I was like, oh, that's a good point. And I just like sat there and painted my nails for 10 minutes. And he proposed to me and I like work. <laughs> my nails didn't look like shit. Um, they kind of did because they were like short and stubby and just like painted with like normal polish. But um, yeah, I just don't understand. Like it, it, I feel like it just, you've, if it's going to happen one time, which it should, like it, it's like you're going to get engaged once. Wouldn't you want to be surprised? Wouldn't you want to have like those that feeling of like oh my god i can't believe this is happening right now that's what i had and it was the fucking 
biggest rush, the happiest moment. Like I was literally like, like, but if I went into it thinking the entire time we're getting our pictures taken, like, oh yeah, he's going to get down on one knee at any second. And oh yeah, by the way, I have a TikTok coming out about this, about me getting ready and the makeup I chose before this moment. It's just like, so many people are doing it though. And it's just like, I don't know. It's so weird. I'm like, it's, I think it's more special. I only can speak from experience. Like I just said, I just think it's so much more special if you're like totally surprised. Yeah. I, literally I think about my engagement all the time and it was on Catalina Island. And so that whole like place has such a it's just so like the whole thing felt so whimsical because we literally roll up in the fog and like this island appears and I have never I've never been to Catalina are these overcooking no it's on medium low heat we're just sauteing I gotta smash this so I'm I'm peeling like as much garlic as possible right now and I'm telling the story um so <laughs> my poor little fingers are like sticky as fuck right now um yeah, we like, I've never been there and I, I'm retelling the story if you haven't heard it. The whole, ep, the whole entire, so I have an entire podcast with like a QA and a about my engagement and everything. Um, a few episodes, it's like back in May. But basically I had never been to Catalina Island. He, about a month before, texts me and he's like, hey, mark your calendars for our anniversary. We're going to Catalina Island. It's like in May. So I was like, oh my God, yay, okay. But like we roll up on a ferry. I've never been there. And this island appears. And it's so like, I don't, I don't know if you've ever heard of Catalina Island or if you've been there. It's just like so like there's no cars or like there's only so many cars. But people people, people don't really drive them. They like um, they use golf carts. And I don't know. You can only really be there for like a couple of days because there's really nothing to do other than like hang at the beach or like eat at the restaurants or like walk around to the little gift shops um but yeah it was pretty special I think one of the fun I'll, I won't tell the entire retell the entire story you just go listen to my episode on it um I think the one of the most there's like two perfect moments of my engagement um so literally two minutes before he proposed <laughs> there was this tour guide like caravan of is that what it's called of um uh golf carts driving down the hill where we were walking up taking photos and this couple was in the, in the golf cart and they're like oh my gosh congratulations congratulations and I literally looked at Corey and I was like oh my god that's so funny they think we're engaged they think we just got engaged two minutes later he pops the question like that was such a perfect moment and the other perfect moment was um the, the whole weekend we were there, I think we left, we got there on like a Friday, left on a Sunday. Um, I couldn't get a hold of my mom. I was trying, I, I knew she was traveling. So that, that was kind of like a, she was in Vegas at this convention and I was trying to get a hold of her to like tell her, hey mom, I'm fucking engaged. Like I wanted to share, you know, I wanted to call her. She like wouldn't answer. And she's like, I'll call you. She kept like delaying when she could talk to me. She was like not being completely unresponsive, but she wasn't like, you know what I mean? So, um, it's so funny we're like driving home from Catalina and Corey's like yeah you know she's probably at the slot machines right now she's in Vegas right and he's just saying all this funny shit and then we pull into our place and like I'm like okay Corey let's do a FaceTime because I was like I'm gonna FaceTime her when we get home because she said like that's a good time like we had planned to FaceTime and uh I go Corey okay this is what we're gonna do I'm going to be like, hi, mom. And then I want to introduce you to someone. This is my fiance. Like I was going to do something corny like that. Literally, as I say this, my mom pops out from behind our mailbox and she's in San Diego and she had surprised. She like he had flown her in to surprise me. Like that was the other perfect moment. And I think that was probably like literally. But see, back to what I'm saying, the whole tangent I'm on right now is because people are like a lot of girls out there are like. I don't know they're just so like involved in it or they're like like I had to follow this one girl she like fully designed her entire ring I'm like I kind of get that because it's like you're gonna look at it every day and you're gonna want to like it but I think it's in my opinion and in my experience um that's what I do here I just share what I can't speak for other people I can only speak for myself right but there's something special about looking at my ring and knowing that like he picked that out for me like I don't know um it's just 
everything about it's like so much more special the whole trip is special me completely being oblivious to him proposing i had no suspicions really um which is crazy to think about <laughs> knowing like what he did i'm like i literally asked on the car why am i going on for like 15 minutes on this topic but these onions are probably like soft now okay turning this down there's supposed to be garlic in there with them um i can't f this up because his parents are gonna eat it and i hyped it up he, or Corey hyped up this beef stew so much to them so like let me smash this garlic throw it in the pan the pot and then i'll be right back okay i finally just got something to drink this is a health aid kombucha in the passion fruit tangerine flavor highly recommend very good all right so the garlic's in we gotta add the tomato paste let it go for like another minute and then um i'm gonna add like a few tablespoons of this by the way like we said earlier more is more more flavor um why do all of my <laughs> can openers bust get busted after like i don't know why they all seem to suck like i've had like even the nice ones i'm like they just never i don't know i always just use the same shit forever i think that's the problem i should get a new one um i don't do i don't do those automatic can openers like it's just i don't like here's something about me i don't like extra appliances and extra things you have to like plug in um it's just like too much so i'm just gonna like finesse this on my knife like that finesse this like <laughs> what are words um we're gonna dollop the <laughs> I'm not trying to like do the whole messy girl character, by the way, that like everyone, not everyone. I actually like posted about it on my story the other day, how like literally being a chaotic, messy girl who doesn't have their life together and has like a messy room and is like always talking about their acne and their depression. Like that's like an entire um, character online. That's like a literal performance. Like I swear it's at this point and I, and I ranted about this on my story the other day, like everything has been done and everything has been exhausted to the point where like at this point you just look like you're choosing to be that character like you're choosing to be a slob <laughs> like literally you don't it, it's weird it's like are, but no is that really authentically how you are or are you doing this because it's super relatable you think people will relate to it and it gets you like more followers and attention because obviously people have mental health issues and they're a mess too and i don't know it's just like i'm sick of seeing people like without their shit together on the internet um i'm saying that because i'm like literally shoving this knife into this can of tomato paste and i'm like and i'm like just throwing it in the pan like i'm not trying to do that to be like why am i even explaining myself right now like i'm literally literally multitasking like i've never done in my life right now and um it's fine so you guys get it um tomato paste in the pot I'm just gonna give it a stir um you're gonna need i don't think i even read the recipe it's like this it's like beef carrots potatoes onions that's like the core okay there's some spices you're gonna need some thyme you're gonna need a bay leaf i have i, I add ghost pepper to mine i like a little spice a little hint of spice and ghost pepper is my favorite salt and pepper obviously and then you're gonna need like some wine red wine i'm actually using white wine today because it's all i have beef stock uh flour and sugar what else yeah it's actually really simple um but you just have to know like the the order and how to like put everything together so okay tomato paste is in um just add a little more why not just it just something just came over my body again we're measuring with our heart today we're not measuring because the recipe told us to do what the recipe said um i feel like that's how my mom cooks i'm sure your mom cooks the same way or like your grandma if you know like someone who's like really good at cooking like me um um it's my new personality traits my new character i'm um the co i'm a cocky a cocky chef with their tits <laughs> cocky uh, self what, what am i okay cool um okay so we're gonna add the beef and then the flour trying to like stay organized right now so i do have okay <laughs> something else i'm doing in my life is i've talked about this a few episodes ago is i'm like changing up my wardrobe i'm like getting rid of old clothes things that things that don't look good on me anymore 
And I don't know if this is just my algorithm because I keep looking at these these types of videos, but I am obsessed with color analysis. Like every video that's popping up on my free page is like, what color season are you? Are you a summer? Are you a winter? Are you, are you an autumn? Are you a cool summer? Are you a cool winter? Are you a deep winter? Are you a cool autumn? It's like basically figuring out what the color analysis, color theory, it, color theory basically takes your skin tone, your hair color, your eye color, and it, it recommends like there's like swatches of colors that would look best on you. So I'm like, I think I figured myself out. I think I finally figured myself out. So my life update, a recent thing I've been doing is like downloading color analysis apps. And, um, okay. I'm going to add the meat cause I feel like this is going to get overcooked. Um, and I've been trying to figure out what color season I am. And I'm pretty sure round of applause or not round of applause, drum roll, please. I think I'm a true summer and it's gotten to the point where I'm, fo I'm following this. Um, Corey makes fun of me because literally every time he looks at me on my phone, I'm on Reddit looking at these really awkward pictures of women post posting selfies with like pieces of colored fabric in front of their face. <laughs> and everyone's just got like a stoic look and they're just like staring at the camera. They're, they're like, help. I don't know what color season I am. What, what colors compliment my skin the best? Like help, help, help. Anyways, I think I'm a true summer and I think it's because it's, it's confusing. So like, or there's spring, summer, autumn, winter. Okay. I need to add the flour. Now, let me just like get a sense here of the recipe. We need a fourth cup of all purpose flour. Again, with the measuring with our heart, just going to sprinkle some on the top. And what you're going to want to do is stir this up a fourth a cup. Okay. Just based on that that's probably a f probably a fourth a cup right there so i'm just gonna add a little more this is not um what is what diets don't agree with flour like m pretty much all of them white flour pff, white this does have white flour and white sugar in it like it's not gonna kill you it's not even a lot it's just to add like body and i don't know it like binds to the meat and, and like makes it I think you know what I think it does no that's baking soda so baking soda if you ever ever need to tenderize meat really quickly um <laughs> Jesus I almost want to take a picture of this right now like what I'm doing um podcasting there if you ever want to tenderize meat really quickly and um it and you you didn't marinate it overnight or like um, let it sit, sprinkle baking soda on it and mix it up and then, um, cover it with tinfoil and let it sit for like half an hour or as long, like a half an hour to an hour. Um, okay. So we're just like dissolving the flour. I'm kind of messy when I cook, not trying to be a messy girl, like, I said, but like, um, I don't know. I just feel like it tastes better when you're not like trying to be all perfect the whole time. Um, this meat's going to get really tender when we braise it in the oven and it's going to like f just melt in your mouth. So yeah, we're dissolving, dissolving the flour into the meat and the onions and the garlic and the tomato paste. What else is in here? Um, do we need to sprinkle a little salt? I just feel like we I haven't seasoned in a bit. Something you need to remember is to season as you go. Just gonna add a little more, a little more pepper. Um, okay. What was I saying? Oh, color season. So here's how it works. So I think I'm a true summer. Okay, naturally, I think I'm a winter. Meaning when I'm in Washington, when I'm dyeing my hair dark, like I used to dye it like super dark brown. And when I'm pale, I'm, I'm definitely a winter. So my undertones are cool. My hair's cool. My eyes are light. I'm like a who's like an actress that's got that same color season um cool um oh Katy Perry light eyes pale skin dark hair that's a true that's like a winter I don't know have you ever heard of this like I'm ner I'm totally nerding out to it right now because I'm like really I'm really trying to figure out which colors look best on my skin tone and like which clothes to buy and it's kind of fun like it's honestly kind of fun 
um just like something new i learned okay but in this so but me today me when i'm in california i'm a little tan my hair is a little lighter right now my skin is kind of neutral cool if that makes sense like it's not fully like pale white like it used to be it's like I have a little more glow to me um I'm a true summer so my best colors the colors that look best on me are like muted cool muted colors but then what's really fucking me up sorry so think of like um a true summer is like a Kate Middleton (laughs) she's a true summer what other people are true summer oh Emily Blunt's a true summer whenever I see pictures of Emily Blunt like here's what it is like you see a whole chart of like celebrities that have or that's who that's who they use to like um as an example when I saw the true summer chart I was like oh that is I like resemble all of their skin tones and their eye color and their hair color um sometimes it's like a dead giveaway I feel like I'm a yeah true summer I don't know I'm like so excited to like next time I go to the store and like buy something and okay I'm like so excited to like pick out the perfect color for me and I know so something that I always thought looked good on me but I didn't know why is the color raspberry so and then I didn't think I could wear like gray but apparently like grays look really good on me I don't think I'm supposed to wear black I think black is too harsh on me but um you can do whatever you want it's just a suggestion like hey this is your undertone these are your overtones this is your whole vibe like it's basically figuring out color analysis color theory is like basically figuring out like what's your overall vibe are you low contrast are you high contrast are you medium contrast I'm medium contrast right now when I have dark hair light eyes pale skin I'm high contrast because it's like the dark with the light has you know how that works like high contrast where now I'm more like blended I'm more like tan warmer hair mute it it's like yeah so that's what am I saying oh that's my most it's a recent life update we got to get this biatch in the oven um okay so we're dissolving the flour one to two minutes we're already past that we got to add wine beef broth water I'm not adding water I just add more beef that's another thing if it asks for water in a recipe if there's like ever like stock involved and also water just add more stock this might overflow. <laughs> We're gonna need two cups of wine, two cups of beef broth. Thing is, is I don't want this to be um, too chunky and not. I don't even know how much beef broth. How much is in this? Thirty-two ounces. Okay, so it's a quart that I just put in, and then we need two cups of wine. I add like three bay leaves. How much does it say? How many bay leaves? One bay leaf. <sighs> and three. Okay. Um two cups of wine this literally so this is um you're supposed to add red wine this is a a white wine that's been in the fridge since I met Corey and it's just been sitting there like in the drawer and when I made beef stew the last time I was like can I is this like gonna kill I don't even okay I don't understand like does wine ever go bad like I I, like at some point it does but like not really this is 2020 from Nobilo 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 um wine two shots of vodka you guys know that meme um what's her face sandra lee okay we're gonna bring this to a boil i'm gonna add the thyme um you need like one and a half teaspoons so like just again feel it out you know what to do like okay i know okay if you have a concept of what a teaspoon is like just just (laughs) you're not gonna overdo it just do it just sprinkle it just see what happens you know okay there's some time got some time we got uh bay leaves this really takes it to that next level you know you need a if you don't have bay like this is something i would not if you don't have this as an ingredient or if you're missing this ingredient go buy it at the store ask your neighbor like does anyone do that anymore oh my god i grew up where like if my neighbor was making cookies and she didn't have butter she'd like come over and ask for like hey do you have any butter like I miss those days like does anyone do that even if you're like in a cute neighborhood and like I feel like no one does that anymore society's just 
don't know i keep seeing all these videos people are on tiktok people are like does anyone is it does anyone else just feel like nothing is the same anymore and they're just like zoning out and disassociating and they don't know what's real and what's not anymore every the world just feels so like dreary and they, they they don't see colors like they used to and like i don't know that's why you got to be the creator of your own reality at this point like i know that we can all sit here and say oh the world's fucked we need better leadership we need a better uh president we need blah 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 like you can go on you, you can go in circles and, and talk about that and people do they have podcasts about it they have talk shows but like at the end of the day stay in your lane focus on your little life in front of you focus on what you can control and make it great just make it great um i'm fucking <laughs> i feel like I, I'm a good I feel like I'm a great example not a good example I think I'm a great example of that like every I don't think a lot of people can say they're living their dreams like and I have I mean my dreams are different than your dreams but obviously I've I have goals and things I want to do in my life that I haven't done yet but it's like crazy when my life right now is so relaxing and so low stress and so healthy and like fun and full and I have the best people around me the best friends best family yeah it's it's just it's crazy it's really not it's just like how I think life should be lived like whatever your situation is if you're not happy this is my like life advice segment right now while this is coming to a boil <laughs> I literally was like on my on my story on Instagram the other day like no one I, I was like life advice is out if you're still doing that in 2023 like it's we, we've already been told everything we already know it's, it's like I don't I'm just saying I want to share my story because I think if it's possible that I can do it and then I've done it you can do it you know what I mean I'm trying to be a source of inspiration and like hope and um just yeah I want to teach you like what I've done and basically what I'm saying is it's about not being stupid. <laughs> Here's what I mean. Like I, I wasn't stupid. Like I came from this chaotic, um, unhealthy, toxic childhood. It, it, for me, it, I mean, I'm just saying what it was. I haven't really talked. I, I keep saying that. I'm like, I haven't really gotten into details. I came from like, I had this like sweet, amazing childhood. And at the same time, there was there was a lot of trauma for me and, and horrible things that happened. And I don't, I don't still, I don't use that as a crutch in my life. Now I don't refer to it. I don't like bring that up. Like, oh, this is, I, I'm this way because I, I'm traumatized. I don't fucking do that. I think that's stupid. I think, again, don't be stupid. Like if you, okay. So if you don't like your situation, whatever situation you're in right now, get smart, follow P Okay. There's a, there's a plan. There's already a path out there of what other people have done to get out of it just it's a whole success leaves clues thing like you have to break your patterns you have to switch it up you have to get in my case a change of scenery I had to literally I wanted I I knew that my environment was key like I think that's my biggest tip if you're like I hate my life things suck well it's like and I know it's expensive to move to a new city I know it's not easy I'm not saying everyone should like flee their city they're in right now to a new city but I think when you're young like that's my big I, you gotta get away you gotta get away you can always come back but you gotta get away and in my case like I went from Washington to California after college and I literally just like created this you know I've had my pitfalls along the way like you guys have seen the, the beginning of this podcast like I wasn't always up like this having a good time um but I created like I I didn't repeat the behaviors I got I I didn't get my own way. I wanted to live a better life. And I, I what I'm, I'm trying to like think about what specifically did I do? I started this podcast and I started talking to myself, but, um, and you know, it's also like, okay, I'm a little older, a little wiser, a little more mature. Um, I just want, you know what it is? It's like you observe other people online. It's like, what are they doing? They look like they have a happy little life. It's like, what are they doing? You know, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, I'm really trying to help right now. I feel like this is going off the rails because I'm like worried this is going to boil over. Um, just let me, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, okay. 
We're going to put this in the oven for two hours. <laughs> that just went off the, the tracks. Um, yeah, so you basically you're going to add all the things to the pot like I did in this first part of the podcast. You're going to bring this to a boil. Cover it with a lid. Put it in the oven for two hours, and I'll be right back. Okay? It's magic. It's movie magic. It's it's uh, showbiz magic, whatever you want to call it. Um, I will be, it's like I Dream of Jeannie. Did anyone watch that? I'm going to teleport two hours from now back to you to finish the, um, oh my gosh, you know what we have to do? <laughs> okay, wait, straight up. <laughs> Remove and add the carrots and potatoes, cover. Okay. So this is a three hour cook. Um, this is like an all day thing. I'm going to be honest. Basically, we're bringing it to a boil. I'm going to put a lid on it. Put it in the oven for two hours on 325. We're braising it. That's what it's called. Then I'm going to come back. We got my mom's potatoes. I'm going to chop up the potatoes and the carrots. We're going to add this, add the carrots and the potatoes. Because if you add them now, they're going to get too mushy. So you don't want to add. So, so that's why you add them later. You can add them to the pot. Put it back in the oven for um, an hour. And then it's done. So, and then you sprinkle parsley on top and you can serve it. So yeah, I'll be back. So in an, in two hours, I'll be back. And then in, uh, an hour after that to finish this, this is a, this is a full, this is a commitment. And this is why I'm like, damn, I'm really doing this right now. Like I'm really podcasting and making like a four hour fucking beef stew. This is like the longest podcast ever. Uh, I hope you're having fun. I know I am like, this is my favorite thing to do. So, um, gonna throw this in the oven and I'll be back in two hours okay the beef stew is done it's been about three hours I ended up putting the carrots and the potatoes in and then after two hours and then I put it back in for another hour so Corey here hi are you too tall for this angle I think he's too tall for this angle you're gonna have to like stand back here Corey's gonna do the taste test to to see if it's good or not so and I found so I mentioned earlier I was gonna look for my grandma's beef stew recipe and i so i did find i didn't find i don't think this is hers it's out of the newspaper it's called election night stew Ooh. and it's uh i wish i saw the date on this somewhere but i i don't see it it's a uh, ground beef an onion cooking oil rice water tomatoes kidney beans uh chili powder but it's a similar recipe where you, where you like brown the meat and then add the onions. And um, so I found that. And then another fun recipe I found in her little box is uh, it's called, I don't really know what this is. It's called potato puff casserole. So I might have to make that or like see what this is. I think it's got cottage cheese, uh, eggs, sour cream, potatoes, and green onions. So she thought that was kind of fun she cut this out of a newspaper a lot of the recipes in here were out of a magazine or a newspaper and then a lot of them were handwritten but um I wish I found like a handwritten beef stew one but I I didn't anyways let's let's try the beef stew so it's been at 325 for three hours braising in the oven this weighs like 20 pounds um we've got four pounds of beef in here uh about four pounds of potatoes four pounds it's it's all like four pounds of onions super um, excited are you you're still like you need to like squat down okay so i need a ladle or something can you get me like a thing to scoop it um so i have two bowls in front of me here one for me one for Corey. it's gonna be super hot but we're gonna try it thank you um, okay, big reveal. Beef stew. You want to see this? It's been in there for three hours. Uh, look at uh, it looks exactly. Uh, wait, I almost. I need to do like an Instagram video for the. Wait, hold on. Lord. And you do the reveal for the gram. Uh, here, come on the microphone. They can't hear you. Uh, it's okay. like the Halo song. So uh, this looks exactly like the first time I, am I recording on there? Yeah. This looks exactly like the first time I made it. It's like the same color and everything. Okay. I don't think I was, 
recording that anyways okay so by the way i changed i was getting all um constricted in my previous outfit uh so yeah it's like almost 6 p.m so let me scoop it up wow this smells incredible Incredible. i want so i'm a couple things are like going through my mind right now about this too i'm like i added a lot of that ghost pepper i don't think i showed you that on camera but i think i went a little heavy-handed on the ghost pepper and i added a lot of salt so i hope it's not too salty or too spicy but it's oh it smells amazing fantastic dear I'm just gonna get a little bit for me i mostly just want the meat pieces this can't suck because you hyped it up so much like when your parents try it um they need to be impressed um go. okay well it's too hot should we like pause and cool it down and then no, I just blow on it. okay just blow on it beef stew taste test oh yeah i added a ton of tomato remember how i added extra tomato paste it's so hot <laughs> it's too hot it's too hot You like it? Mm-hmm. Did you try, like eat it? Eat it, or did you just lick it? He needs a Lacroix. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we're too overexposed. Can you turn off the ring light? Just screw that little, or just unplug it. Mm, it's fine. Okay. Let me try to do Very this. Good. Let me try to do this one more time. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Too hot? Mm. It's like too good. This is like. So I mentioned in the very beginning, I use mm. the lean beef stew meat you get at the grocery store. And a lot of recipes, like the bougie New York Times or Bon Appetit recipes, will say buy a chuck roast and then chop it up yourself and then cut off the the fat it's just like save yourself some time buy the pre-made pre-packaged pre-chopped stew meat it it it's it just tastes better I, I, not, well really good. it's just it, yeah it's easier and i think it tastes better so and then add um more meat than potatoes mm -hmm. um and then less carrots than potatoes and less carrots than potatoes and if you don't have like two substitutions i had to do were balsamic glaze instead of balsamic vinegar because i didn't have any and i also substituted white wine for red wine so and it turned out great and then add the ghost pepper if you want a little spice a little depth a little extra something let me show you what it looks like this is from trader joe's it's the smoked ghost chilies spice and the reason i like ghost pepper is because if you have like a habanero hot sauce or like a yeah most hot sauces are very intense when you first take a bite and it kind of burns your throat and burns your tongue where ghost pepper it sounds crazy because it's like ghost pepper it's like the most spicy pepper but it's more mellow it kind of hits your tongue and kind of takes you for a ride so when it when it comes to like beef stew recipes or what else do I put this in I put this in our chicken noodle soup it's just a nice little hint of something where it's not it's spicy but it doesn't overpower the flavor it just kind of adds a little something um but yeah okay I'm gonna wrap the episode this was my beef stew recipe episode great job, honey. Great job. Corey approved ten ten. Corey approved 10 out of 10 um love the flavoring love the ghost pepper can you Really, you. really love the ghost paper. I high, highly recommend <laughs> it. I'm speechless. I can't even talk. Form the sentences together. Well done. Well done. Okay, it's Corey approved. Um, does it taste the same as the first time I made it? Uh, it's got a little bit more kick, but yes, it's very similar. I like I like a little spice to it. So well done. Great. Okay. Well, this has been amazing. Um, such a fun time. Thank you so much for being here and joining me today for my uh beef stew recipe i hope you yeah. 
Go ahead and make this and tag me. Like, just do it. Um, it's beef, chunks, potatoes, carrots, and onions. That's like the main ingredient lineup. And then there's like a few spices, obviously, and some beef broth. But super easy to make. Make sure to make this and tag me. Um, yeah, that's it. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. I'm on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Breaker, wherever you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to the podcast. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're watching this on YouTube right now make sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Jacqueline Monroe and review the podcast review the podcast uh, five stars that's it thanks for being here and I'll talk to you next week bye Me, blood so violently, thanks for trying me. Right. Now it's finally time to see.